Well, a very warm welcome to another episode of Fauza's Diary. If you are looking for something little and yet inspiring, then you have stumbled upon the right show. That's the beauty about my diaries. They inspire us, they encourage us, but also they make us think. Well, joining me today on this conversation is a sister friend, Naima Thompson. She's joining me all the way from Vietnam, but she is a Trinidadian, the first Trinidadian on my diary. That is so amazing. Yes. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was on the other side, you know, like when we are really recording in real life. <laughs> just ignore there was a camera and I would just stand up and just give you a hug. Oh, you know, let's do a that's, virtual hug. That's, that's how I feel right now because listen, you're all the way from Trinidad. I, I have friends from Trinidad, but I've never had a, an, an opportunity to host someone from that part of the world. It's very far, but I'm just so grateful and thankful that, you know, through this new technology that we are actually able to do this right now. Yes. Naima Thompson <laughs> is actually joining me right now from Vietnam. We're going to yes. get to the reason why she ended up there, but I would like for her to take a bit of this time and introduce briefly herself to, to all of us once again. Oh, thank you so very much, Fauza. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, Fauza's diary, I mean, hey, I think that's absolutely brilliant of you. Thank you for inviting me. I am uh, from Trinidad and Tobago. It's a, yes. it's a twin, twin island. And I am an international theater teacher. I have been doing this for over 30 years. And um, I've lived outside of Trinidad more than I have inside. My uh, passion is rooted in humanity and the perseverance of humanity. Mm. This is my short intro of myself. I am 52 and very happy to announce it. <laughs> because hello <laughs> no 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 let's let's not even talk about that you don't look anywhere <laughs> on the it. Okay. honey as, as soon as i start to look ah, in I'm my gonna... 50s i'll start saying i'm 42 but ah, today amen. i'm 52 amen to that and listen i'm gonna i'm gonna take that whatever it is that you are doing i'm gonna take that and i will receive it for me so that when i get <laughs> 52 i look like you well girl it, it might be about genetics eh? it might be about weeding you know how we do so here we are <laughs> all right so yeah. this is uh who i am in a nutshell i've been a teacher for many years i started when i was um 21 in new york city and i've been at it since wow that's very uh, very so powerful yeah that is so powerful naima but yes, you have said that you are um, born and bred in Trinidad, but you've lived um, not so long uh, in Trinidad. Um, you know, going through your, your, your bio, you've traveled the world. You are even in UAE at a certain point um, yep. of your journey, of your adventure. So you have mm -hmm. really lived in different countries, Qatar, UAE, China, Nihau. <laughs> How? How? You know? Never got it. <laughs> so it's so many different countries and they're all really so different. Middle East, Asia, you know, America. Africa. America I I've been to Kenya also. You know, you've been to Africa, especially you've been to Kenya, my own homeland. We say Nyumbani. And hmm. now you're in Vietnam. But when I look at it, it's it, the countries you've lived, Naima, they're so different from I mean, we are all in the same web of connection of creation, but what, what you know, what, what led you into this adventure? You know, I'm an international trained teacher, which means that my master's is, let me clear, my master's is in international education. So okay. because, because that's my field, um, I look for work around the world. 
-hmm. So uh, my journey started in New York City where I got my basic, my, 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 my foundation of training. I, and I worked there for, I lived there for 11 years. Then um, I returned home and worked for the international school in Trinidad and Tobago and set up my own foundation at that point, my own um, NGO at that point. Mm -hmm. And because I positioned myself at the International School of Port of Spain, it opened um, it opened the doors for me to, after my two years of inch of entry in international mm -hmm. teaching, it offered me the opportunity to go out to the world. So at that time, my mom had passed. By the time I got my master's and I had spent seven years in Trinidad and Tobago, mm. my mom passed and I recognized that I didn't want to be home anymore. So I, um, there's a bit more to that that I can speak on, but, but the, in essence, because mm -hmm. my master's was in international education, mm -hmm. um, that was my pathway. And that's why I've ended up in these different countries. And it really has been where the work has been. It's not like I sit down and choose to go. If a school contacts me and mm -hmm. I investigate further and I see that I really do like this posting, then I will take it. Right. Okay. That's interesting. And how long are you in Kenya? Well, I'm just curious. Okay. I'm just I'm just trying to dig in. I, my my first my first foot into Kenya was uh, in 2014, maybe okay. um, April 2014, mm. and I came in not knowing anyone or anything. I landed a beautiful Kenyan woman from Maggie Holidays. Margaret met me at the airport, and I said, "I don't want to see the Maasai jumping up and down. I want children to work with." Oh. Um, and because my intention was to bring necessary arts, which is my NGO, mm -hmm. into, into Africa. But I started at Kenya because it's so easy. I didn't need a visa because I'm part of the Commonwealth. And um, yeah. Kenyans, Kenyans speak English quite yeah. a lot. They, you know, so it, it, in terms of the language, it would have been easy uh, to work with the children. So Kenya was chosen for, for, for those reasons. And I've been in going, coming and going from Kenya with teams of teachers now since yeah. 2014. Mm -hmm. Wow. Even in the pandemic, we've still managed to have some online training for uh, leaders on the ground in Kenya who mm -hmm. can continue the work with the kids. Um, so this is why I've been in so many countries around the world. Yeah. Um, Qatar, Thailand, China, um the uae yeah yeah it's yeah it's it's i, I think it's beautiful but Kenya, also Uganda. <laughs> and i love it really naima because you you just you know you you are impacting lives it's just not a profession i feel like you know um the the little time we've known each other uh virtually um I feel like you are so led to, you know, to tapping into into you into humanity and into other people's lives, especially the the next generation, you know. And it's yeah. it's a beautiful thing. But I know you just mentioned that, you know, um, you are still doing projects despite the the pandemic. Um, you know, you cannot really nobody really you can't travel, but there is just a lot of restrictions and so much has changed and. We, we all have had to navigate. And I'm just curious uh, to know as an educator, how has COVID impacted you actually personally? Yeah, because everybody had had to, you know, to reinvent and, you know, to, 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 to yeah, to, to look at things differently. So how has it been that for mm. you, whole new norm, if we will? Yeah but also for your students, because, you know, being an educator, especially in the industry that you are in, in art, it's more, I would want to imagine you, you, you have to be physically, I don't know, you know, yeah. How, yeah. So how has this new norm been for you and how have you been navigating? Um, Okay, first, let me answer about how it has had a personal effect, mm. uh, impact, and then let me speak on the education side of it. Right. On a, on a personal level, because Vietnam was very late in being affected 
mm-hmm. the way we've seen other countries been affected. Mm-hmm. Last year, March, we went into lockdown for 15 weeks. Um, in, in the end of February into March, the country went into lockdown and we circumvented a lot of problems very early. So for the rest of the year, we were more or less fine. Um, there was one surge at one point that was relatively short, but we've had it pretty well, actually, for the, for the most of the journey. Our troubles have just started. So okay. Vietnam, yeah, so I, we were online for 15 weeks last year and it was, it was different and I will talk about it in a while. Um, now, so the journey has been bearable up until I think this point. When I say okay. bearable, you know, we've, I haven't traveled anywhere since 2019. Mm-hmm. That has been, that has been, um, that has had a, a, a huge impact on me because I haven't been home um, to Trinidad and Tobago since 2019. I haven't seen my people. Um, mm. I haven't seen my friends in Germany. I haven't traveled like most people. So personally, I have to say that now that we are in this really restrictive lockdown and it's been happening for three months now, we're going into the fourth month now. Um, they've extended a deadline now to September 15th. So. Okay. Personally, I have started to do yoga. I am fully aware of um, mental wellness. Mm -hmm. And I am fully aware of the role that I play in my life with other people. So it's important for me to make sure that I maintain a balance of body, mind, and and and, uh, spirit. So, So that has been a conscious decision in mm-hmm. order to keep myself mentally, spiritually, physically balanced so I can be there for my students. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to say that my philosophy in life today is that happiness is here and now. Oh, I love that. It is here and now. It's nowhere else. We could, we could, we, we could try to pretend that it's somewhere that's coming tomorrow, but it is here and now. And that's all we have. Uh, a promise that's all we have right absolutely because I have that mindset I think that I am managing the lockdown and I am managing the crisis that we're in with this pandemic on so many levels from wearing masks all the time to be vaccinated Mm -hmm. we know it's a hundred things right so (laughs) I I think because I have an out an an outlook of happiness is here and now I'm Mm -hmm. able to for the most part, celebrate my life minute by minute and keep yeah. myself in, in accordance with my belief. Now, yeah. this is not to say that I don't enter rabbit holes. I was in a rabbit hole up to last night at two, at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but I don't stay Let's there. go in the rabbit hole. Let's get out. <laughs> But it's okay to go in sometimes because you got to keep it real, right? Because we don't want to, we don't want to pretend that it's not impacting us because it is impacting us, right? So, um, so for me, yoga is my uh, go-to these days to try to keep myself solid. I am um, terribly homesick at this point, and it's 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 getting to me more than I thought. Mm. So this is how COVID in general is impacting my life. Um, when it comes to the education aspect of it, for me, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm not in a panic mode. I, ha- I didn't enter a panic mode. I've never been uncomfortable. I just simply view it as another way to deliver the curriculum. Okay. Um, is, it, is it ideal? Nothing is ideal. Absolutely. And as, and, and as soon as we get ideal, I was standing in what we believed to be ideal we started complaining about something not working so nothing is ever really <laughs> yeah. yeah speak sister speak ah, nothing is ever really working they so, are watching they're watching tell yeah. them so Ooh. i think I, I i i think it's important for me as an educator yeah to seize a seasoned educator i'm not a young educator so because of my seniority in education i think it is critical that i one, practice self-care, which I do. Mm-hmm. And two, that I inspire self-care among my children, among my students. Because what 
whatever happens academically is going to happen. I can't con- I can't control what's happening in their households, and there's a lot happening in people's households. Absolutely. That, that gets in the way of these children really functioning the way they would. So I am of the belief that right now in this pandemic, it's like a war. And in wartime, we stop education because we got to no. get it done. So I'm not, suggest- I'm not suggesting that we should stop education, but I am suggesting that we we recognize that, 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 that the shape is shifting. Yeah. And, as that, and as the shape shifts, the standards and benchmarks will have to shift with them so that the students can succeed. Wow. And yeah, the students are struggling. They do have a lot of mental health issues that are not being addressed, that people are simply turning a blind eye to. And we, we, we will pay the price for turning our, our eyes away from the youth who we have asked these children. These children have been put in an unprecedented situation and they are yeah. holding it down. They are holding it down. Yeah, yeah. So now that you have actually mentioned that, Naima, it was, um, you see, this is what I love about us speaking real life issues. Yeah. Now that you have actually recognized that the children are somewhat, you know, uh, holding it down, a bit, you know, struggling with the whole, uh, the whole new norm and all that, if we will call it so, um, what role are you playing? in making sure that your students, because you can't, you know, there is the role of the parents, right? Yeah. At home, there is the role of the mother for me, you know, as a mother, and then there is the role of the teachers, you know, the educators. So there's sometimes we don't even know the dynamics of the household in this family, yeah. you know, yeah. because, yeah. you know, literally we all have had to, yeah, some people are not used to being with with each other people all day yeah. yes for 24 7 now literally we are forced to love one another <laughs> hey not a bad thing <laughs> but <laughs> or not <laughs> uh well i think we we have to yeah we have to, i think it. yeah but then what what are you doing, you know, to at least to make sure that the well-being of the children is not really going really bad? What, you know, role are you, what role are you playing? I tell you what, currently I'm an intern drama therapist. Mm. So I am not only a theatre teacher teaching a, a set curriculum to the standards and benchmarks. I'm mm-hmm. also a drama therapist. So I can... I can look deeply from the sidelines. I know how to see my learners. Mm -hmm. I know how to reach my learners. I know how to try to pull back from the strain of the work sometimes. I know how to measure what they can manage and what they cannot. Mm. Uh, When it comes to the arts, I believe that the arts is the soul of any academy. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we are the ones that will manage the well-being for the community of any given school. Right. And so I, as, as, a, as a head of department, I inspire mm-hmm. my teachers to um, take on this mindset so that when mm-hmm. we are, when arts in particular, when we are approaching these learners mm-hmm. who, are, or who are struggling with their academics, their academic subjects, yeah. when they come into our spaces, my encouragement Um, for myself and my staff is to keep in mind that we are the spirit of the school. We Mm. are the joy. We are the soul. Mm. And what we do is actually a healing process. Mm. Yes, we are covering the curriculum of choir, but the actual process of going through the journey Mm. Or the actual process of going through learning how to master the art of Stanislavski or his technique. Just that journey alone handles your well-being, connects you to your personal context. It starts to bring questions up for you to answer, the student this is. Um, So the arts itself lends itself as a healing agent. So for me, as, a, as an educator of the arts, I try to go with that. Okay. I, try to, I, try to, I try to go with the 
agency of healing. Mm, wow, that's that's a beautiful thing, uh, you know. And I just love that you see not that, you not you that sorry, not that we get it right, but that's the intention. Mm. The impact might be different, and we can't or we won't always get it right. But we are fully aware that the children are suffering to a great measure in this just that we are suffering absolutely but i love that you have observed that it takes someone who has wisdom and maturity to see some things on the sideline yeah you know yeah and And say there is yes and experience and say see there is an issue here and what can we do about it that's maturity that's experience that's wisdom right there naima And, and 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 i also try to inspire the team to build relationships with the children because mm. the children cannot always talk to mom and dad. They can't and they won't, especially the adolescent. They're not going to talk to the mom and dad or the whomever. So I inspire our team to be on the lookout. Nothing is what it seems. If a child is not putting their camera on, I am against teachers forcing children to put their camera on Mm. because we cannot control what is happening with uncle Bob in the background. Yeah. We can't control what is happening with auntie Sylvia's voice penetrating when the child is trying to deliver a monologue. Yeah. Or trying to focus on, 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 on the teacher teaching the math. So we take a lot for granted. We are not in the classroom. Yeah. We're in somebody's home. We do not know if that child needs to go and take care of their eight-year-old brother because the mother must be in a meeting with her boss. We don't know. So we cannot, we got to find ways to uh, assess their learning and not uh, use uh, whether they have their camera on or not as as a reason to pull their grade down. We have to find a balance and a level of a measure of understanding yeah yeah wow I've never been never before have t has the entire education faculty entered people's homes to teach this is new yeah. and when once that camera is on we're in somebody's home yes that's all yeah. it's actually interesting because i'm in your home now and you are in my home right now yeah yeah we are in each other's home and, and, and i if yeah and i never listen <laughs> I never. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm saying. So if something were to happen right now, right? If Uncle Bob were to pass in my background behind me, you will see his bareback, big belly walking across the screen. You understand? And the poor children and them traumatized with their friends teasing them with this nonsense. It's ridiculous. There's a lot yeah. going on. <laughs> and then, of course, we have, um, <laughs> of course, we have the scenario where you have Two, Naima, three, hang on. I, I, see, I see the, the, the Caribbean coming out now. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gil, they're coming. Oh, it's fine. I love it. I love I it. I know. I'm not sorry. I love it. It comes up organically and we go with it. Yes, but listen, yo, I really, you know, I didn't, well, I, I, I think we just take some things slightly, as you've said, honestly. And now that you've talked about uh, about it, and you know we are having this conversation, I really hope that many parents, even other educators, yeah. you know, that they will, I, 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 my prayer is that whoever will stumble this, that, you know, they will actually be like, hmm, because I didn't see it like that, that in my yeah. son's room, wherever he sits when he's in class, you know, it's like the entire class is in my house. That's what I'm saying. And they can hear and you know, there's things happening. And I have had children in very embarrassing situations. And so for me, I, re- I remember last year, a kid was 11th grade kid who had to do his assessment uh, presentation. Yeah. Imagine you have a child, you've organized yourself for the past three weeks over this unit, and now you are ready to deliver. It is your, it's, it is your summative assessment. Mm-hmm. You're, you have to have your microphone open. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have your virtual background on, and all of a sudden, in the middle of your presentation, Uncle Hoo Hoo is shouting, what, I don't even know what in Vietnamese, in the background. 
than the kids in the, in the room who understand Vietnamese. Of course, they are now laughing. I mean, it's just embarrassing. It's yeah. a terrible situation. And I'm not saying that this is popular. This is, a, this is an ongoing thing. I think, however, we have to give pause. And yes, every, but I everybody yeah. needs to needs to consider this. Absolutely. And I'm just thankful that you are actually sharing about these things and that we are having this conversation really. So now my question that oh you see, this that's why I love these conversations. What can we do now as parents to support our children better? Here we go. Now, this is my frustration with parents. Tell me. And it's, it's not a, let me start corrected. It is a frustration, but I also have understanding. Mm -hmm. All right. One thing that I cannot process, I can't understand why the adults in these children's lives do not treat the thing as a regular school day. Mm. If you wake up to get to brush your teeth and have your little oatmeal and have your shower or whatever and get dressed and pack your bag and get on the bus and go to school. If this is your journey every day mm -hmm. and then we're in a pandemic and now you have to stay home, get up, get your teeth brushed, get your shower, put on. I don't understand why schools do not make it mandatory for the children to wear their school uniforms. I'm not understanding that. If a school has a school uniform, Part of getting ready for your day is getting dressed for your day. Mm -hmm. So the student who shows up ready to learn mm -hmm. has had a shower, has brushed their teeth, has done their normal morning routines, and now they are ready to sit at a desk with their laptop and they're mm -hmm. ready to work. Forgive me, I am speaking about a certain demographic in our global society of children mm -hmm. who have the fortune of owning a laptop and being yes. ready to do Thing. yeah so let me that's who I'm talking to right now okay? yes or, yeah. or speaking of the yeah because parents, those who couldn't afford to have those things uh, that's like, a different I, conversation it's yeah. a different conversation and you know that yeah it's a different conversation, conversation. Because, like, so, yeah I think in the end consistency is a key and if we can manage to communicate to our learners that we are here for them to maintain and sustain consistency Mm -hmm. then they stand a chance to really grow in this new norm. But if we, if we subscribe to the mindset that, oh, well, we're at home and we don't have to take a shower, we don't have to move in the way that we normally move, even teachers mm -hmm. are in their bed, in their pajamas. And they're teaching. And they're teaching. And this is a mindset that I understand we're in a pandemic and I understand that we, nobody knows what's going on, it's unprecedented. But we do know what it means to show up to teach and we do know what it means to show up to learn and we understand that if we do not dress ourselves, dress ourselves in our character for the day, we cannot have success. Wow. We you can't. Are so, what, so one of the things that frustrates me is that the adults in this equation, we are subscribing to something that is absolutely detrimental to the development of these young of people. Of our children. Of our yes, and we are allowing them to stay in their beds in their pajamas with a laptop on, on them. Get up. It's not, <laughs> absolutely, because listen, I, I, yeah, I'm, my hand is up because that's me, like the mad, I'm like, honey. You're going to sit down on your desk and study you. on your desk because your Thank bed you. has a different um, purpose. It's for yeah. sleeping and not for studying. And your brain, your brain needs to make the shift. When you wake up and you get up out of your bed, your yeah. brain will begin to function for what it is heading into. If you mm. stay in your bed, your brain is confused. Your brain thinks it's still in, it's still in sleep, sleep mode. mode. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well. Mm. So this uh, is one thing. So parents, um, for me, I would like to see parents who can do it. God knows that there's a lot of problems in people's homes. And this is what I'm saying. There are a tremendous amount of domestic violence issues. There's a tremendous amount of, of incest. There's a tremendous amount of issues. So barring all of that, one of the things that could lead us to success is having parents who set boundaries and set direction for their children to succeed and not give in because the children are children. They will complain. They will say they don't want to do it. 
they would as much as they could spend eight hours a day in a video game god forbid if they spend eight hours a day on their computer doing work here we are right so kids are going to be kids and they're going to want to uh divert from what is expected yeah. we can't we can't give in to them oh you are a, such an educator and that's why i really wanted us to have this conversation just before back to school baby parents please you are, get it you, together please boundaries and direction because these young you know these young human beings they still need us as adults yes now so that's the parents so if the parents who thank are not you. thank you present in that way see yeah. if you could change your mindset and set a schedule for your children they know at this time is this boom mm -hmm. boom 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 and it's don't be giving the children lunch in the middle of the in the, in the middle of the class calling them for the lunch it's not okay, okay. <laughs> you okay. have to have the schedule because all right i'm a teacher i'm expecting 14 children 24 children in my classroom at 120 mm -hmm. at 125 i have somebody coming in the screen with a bowl of food eating if we were in school you wouldn't do that why are you doing that now so we need the consistency. The school has a school day schedule and there is lunch built into the schedule. So parents need to figure out how to provide the meal that their children will eat at the time that they are having lunch, not during the math class that the teacher has prepared and needs Johnny in, on screen, but Johnny is writing a message telling the teacher I'm having lunch now. No, you're not having lunch now. You're having math now. Like what are you class. talking about? What are you talking about? Right? So, <laughs> so I think it's very important for the adults in the education community to really um, take a critical look at what we are doing. Right. So, right? And then you have teachers who are being impacted by this COVID like everybody else and are suffering. You have teachers with kids. I have a teacher up here with two children, a three-year-old. I don't know how she is doing it child i don't know what you're doing it so i could say whatever i want parents have it <laughs> parents have it to do let me tell you that is the trini and me for you <laughs> listen it's not easy a teacher with three kids teaching someone else's children and managing their own children at the same time it's a madness so you have to have structure you must you must have discipline and structure, period. I love that. Discipline. Period. Yes, discipline, period. Discipline, discipline structure, structure. Schedule, boundaries. The minute, yeah. Yeah, the, the minute you don't have it, you, that, <laughs> that's a <wrap>. Madness. Madness. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for really. You're welcome. Like, you've taught me something, honestly. <laughs> I love this conversation. But I want us to go back to the arts. How yeah. would you... Um, how can parents discover their children's talent and how can we nurture and support those talents? let me tell you this with or without covid we're talking yeah. on this topic yeah so right. let me say this to you um in my opinion and i think through my studies i can say mm -hmm. in 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 the in the span of human development there, there's a certain stage in in a child's life where they will begin to behave in a certain way or be drawn to certain things. And I think that one of the things that parents probably do very well and should really be conscious of mm -hmm. is to be ultra observant. So if you have a kid who comes in the kitchen while you're cooking and that kid is very demonstrative in their actions mm -hmm. and can and can talk on and on and on and on in coherent <laughs> sequences for example then your brain should be saying hey maybe this kid is a storyteller or a public speaker hmm. instead of telling that child shut up you're too noisy thank you right yeah. so it is it is all about um for me it is all about the parent, the parent being the observer. Mm -hmm. And when you see that the child's intention or, or, or attention is mm -hmm. towards something, don't shut them down. Understand that those are actual gifts that they have that can be directed into mm -hmm. a particular talent. 
it's 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 a it's it's a gift so so don't crush it you know if you see your child every time you sit down at the dinner table to have dinner your child oh. starts to tap a beat on the table don't yeah. tell the child to stop cultivate that skill cultivate it cultivate that gift because it's it's intrinsic yeah so if you were to put that child into a drumming school hey he might be the it's next best drummer to show up yeah i'm just saying so a lot of times it, it, it is natural in a child's developmental stages to demonstrate their gifts mm. unfortunately many adults are too busy telling children to shut up are too busy sending children away with their ipads are too busy on their phones and not paying attention <laughs> this is this is the society that we are that we are in now. Listen, Naima, I repent for myself <laughs> and for all the parents. Thank you. Because listen, this is a real deal right here. This is a real talk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we are having dinner. You cannot make noise. Or oh, table manners. All oh, this, all oh, that. And table. And this is the, uh, let me just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. You think. This notion of table manners, here we're going to go into the whole colonial conversation, which I probably shouldn't. Let me leave that alone for another day. The point is, the children are talking to us all day, every day. They're showing us through their body language, through their choices, through their intrinsic ways. They're showing us who they are, mm -hmm. but we're not paying attention. And so we miss the beat. So my advice to parents who, are, who want to understand their children's talents, mm -hmm. pay attention. Thank you, Naima. Thank you. You just nailed it. Yeah, I yeah. I'm gonna pay attention to see what you know. And if what... you if you see a certain skill in there, approach a teacher. Mm. Hey, I, I, I noticed my son likes to write. Do you have any units coming up with short with short stories? Mm. Do you know of any competitions that maybe I could we we could inspire him? Pay attention to your child. The answers are right there. Yes. Because you. you know why? Because all of us have those gifts inside. Oh, yes. All and we, yeah, and we we you know, I, I think even for me, you know, as as a believer, it's it's there in the scripture. You know, you know, every the Bible it's clearly saying that every good gift, you know, is is from above. And God <laughs> has created each one of us with these gifts. And yeah. I just love what you've said. We need to pay attention and to be observant to yes. see i mean um it's it's like the story of joseph in the bible you know he okay. he was created he was born with the gift of articulating dreams can you imagine if the mom said oh no joseph you are lying yeah you're creating stories you are creating stories it wouldn't have brought him out of jail when he was in prison okay. and to become you know the whole Oh, Naima. Okay. You know the whole. You know, the, yeah. Because you know the thing is, the, the the truth is this: the children. The other thing I want to say, sorry, is that when a child comes to you and says, "Mom, I want to try," a girl comes to you and says, "Mom, I really want to try kickboxing." Mm. Don't try to dissuade the child. Find the kickboxing class and put her in it. Or instead of saying, oh, you're a girl, you cannot do this, you cannot do well, that. Well, you know, I try, I try my best not to go there because you see that level of ignorance. Girl, no, we're gonna, no, we can't. We're going to go there. Stop, stop telling the girls, no, that is for boys. And stop telling the boys, no, that is for girls. What are we doing? I'm not asking us to do with the it, they, and all them thing. I just say, <laughs> um, we don't need to go down that road. But if a young lady, a seven-year-old girl says to you, mom, I think I want to try kickboxing. You don't shut that down because you don't know. Good. You don't Naima. know if that's yeah. You know you you don't know if that's going to be her ticket. But listen, it it's for me. I love that because it's also for self defense. Uh, yeah, and then it protects her, doesn't it? Here we are. Boom, shakalaka, boom, boom. Yeah, I I I I, I think we adults drop the ball a lot. Uh, thank we, you so much for reminding us, honestly, because sometimes we are not even aware no, of we the drop things the ball that a lot. we do. I'm telling you, oh my goodness, there is so much nuggets to learn from um, from this conversation, Naima. I want thank us you. to talk about your why. 
My wow. Why, why, why? Yes. You know, there is always right. a reason why people do what they do daily, waking up. You know, for me, I always say, if you wake me up 2 a.m., you say, I don't have money to pay you, but I want you to come and talk to this young girl or this young boy. I'm going to be gladly I'm there. get I'm up and it. go. I'm there is a it. reason, right? There is a why behind it. Um, you have had a why for necessary acts. What led you into that journey? Necessary Arts first started in New York City after I came to understand uh, an execution of a 14-year-old boy. He was shot outside the projects in Madison Avenue, um, uh, 104th and Madison. Uh, that broke my heart. Mm. I, at the time, was teaching in Harlem. And I understood that demographic very well. And I understood at that time of, uh, in that time around the 90s, there was the stop and frisk laws of New York City. Uh, Giuliani, I think, put, that, put those uh, laws in. And so the young black man or young black boy was being relentlessly targeted and, and profiled and stopped randomly and searched so violently and all this other stuff was in the was in the space of Harlem at the time that I was there and the gang rivalry was high and the kids and so what started Necessary Arts was me um, going back to a question that I've always asked myself since I was about 10 mm -hmm. um, what what you know what what can I do Mm. I have come to know this. I have, I'm aware of this situation. Mm -hmm. It is a, it is impacting me to the point where I'm crippled literally. Like, I don't know what, to, like I feel as an educator, I have just failed somehow. I was a human being on, on the earth. Like, what am I doing after 3 PM when mm. I'm finished teaching my teaching day? What's happening for the rest of the day? And that's where necessary arts came into play because I recognize that I can do more, that I can set up, an evening program where those kids, instead of them going on the on the streets to hang out and get caught up in, in trouble, they can have an opportunity to come into Necessary Arts and do the hip hop dancing. That was actually the focus at the time. Um, and so the why has to do with humanity. The why has to do with me um, from an early age witnessing my mother be very charitable mm. in her life. So on a, for Easter, for example, my mom might cook, you know, in Trinidad, we have a dish called a roti. It's an Indian dish. It's, you know, you could do curry chicken and potato and thing and put it in a roti skin and eat it like a burrito. I like so, me roti. Yeah, here we are. So, <laughs> so my mom would literally make, we would all help make like 300 rotis and we would get in the car and drive down to the port of spain the independent square park um sorry it's escaping me now but woodford square and we would go there and deliver food to homeless people i've witnessed my mom pick up homeless people from the street mm -hmm. and and take them to the hospital because they've been so ill and, and in my country when you take when you go to the hospital you need to have a family member who will come and take care of you also kind of thing so because I grew up witnessing my mom and she never imposed this in any way. She just, that's she just lived her life that way. Mm. It, it fell on me. Mm. So when we say Naimo, why, why, are, why necessary art? Why are you in Turkey and Uganda and Syria and, and everywhere, not Syria, um, the border of Syria there, Gaziantep. Why are you all over the place doing this work? Kenya, why? Mm. Well, you know why? If not me, who? Who else? And if not now, when? And that's my why. I love it. Really, if not me, who? Mm. Yeah. So the, 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 the lives that have been impacted because Necessary Arts opened its doors in, its, in New York since 1990, what? I don't remember, 1996, I think. Um, that's enough for me. And it's never been done. I, you know, you asked me the why. The international school teaching has been the financier of necessary arts. Mm -hmm. So because I work as an international teacher and I can earn a salary that's a little better than had I stayed home, 
Mm-hmm. I can't, I, I put part of that um, after I meet my responsibilities. I don't have kids, so it's just me. I put my money into the outreach work that Necessary Arts does. I love um, that. So I love this that. is... This is where it, I'm not waiting for some government to, uh, to, 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 to tell me yes. I'm not waiting for some, some, some philanthropist to wake up. Piss off. Sorry. Oops. My bad. I'm not waiting for that. I'm not because, waiting for anybody no, either now. No, we can't. We can't because wait. Because when if, you if, wait, if not you're you going to wait, baby. You, you, you wait you know. if I was in Trinidad for seven years and yes we did get support but there's so much work to be done that we can't wait we can't sit down and say oh no I can't do it because I didn't get the funding no you can do it get on your flight and go and do what you want to do <laughs> yes absolutely and that's what I told people thank you so much that you have actually tapped into that because many times people think oh you've got to be rich to do these kind of things to help to do this to do no you you don't need to have even too much you know what rich is is? rich is the act of doing it even when you don't have that's being rich absolutely and the joy that you you get the joy Ah! it's 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 unmeasurable and and furthermore i'm a teacher so the likelihood of me becoming rich not through teaching I believe that our children need us right now. Absolutely. And so I, when I did a TEDx talk some years ago in Dubai, it was about the power of you. Mm-hmm. And it spoke to I, I, the message that I want to hit everybody with in their heart is you are enough. You don't need anyone or anything else to step into the humanity of yourself so that you can then step into the humanity of others. You don't need anything else. I love that. <laughs> I, 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 Whatever else will come, but you've got to take the step. If you don't take the step, what are we doing? Absolutely, Naima. Absolutely. That, that is right there, a heart of a servant. That's it. That's you know, it. and I, 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 I'm just... Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't agree with you. I don't know. I, it's yeah, it's for me, it's overwhelming. And I always say that the joy that you get, it's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Thank you so much for reminding Thank us. Thank you. Yeah. But I also love why, I, I, I love that you've honored. You've honored that, if it's not me. Who? I mean, listen, Naima, people are so busy here running for this, running for fame of that, grabbing here and taking there. <sighs> they miss the point much. completely. They miss the point completely. It's, There's so many distractions. It's too we live, much. We live in a world of mass distraction. It's too um, much. And all it really requires is yeah. a moment. Just stop. That's Just true. stop. Connect with your own heart connect with your own inner joy and you will understand the importance of the interbeing that we all share you will begin to understand yeah. how connected what you do how connected that is to the next person and sometimes we don't even realize that we don't because we don't stop we yes. don't stop we are constant it is constant we don't stop we don't what start. would you tell parents? I know you've spoken to me today. I have <laughs> repented for some parents. Okay. Listen. Talk to us. What can you tell parents who, who they're just busy? That's number one. But also... You know, I, I love what you said earlier on that we need to be observant, you know, and we need to be present. We need to be present. Can you can you just tell us something? What would be your closing remarks to us? Tell I us. Think, um, I think I think in the end, if each person could ask themselves the question, why? Okay, this is a very important question. Mm-hmm. When we understand our why. 
we can gain clarity on how to move. Yeah. But if we are too busy yeah. running around the hamster wheel <laughs> and not admitting that you're running around a hamster wheel and allowing your ego to keep you in that hamster wheel, if you, if, and I'm going to say, I'm not a parent, so I can't talk for me, but if a parent parent does not talk to me talk to me talk to, to you if a and parent all does, these moms and dads who are going to yeah. come this convert speak you, Naima, speak you think you're busy wait you will see what busy is if we do not stop all we are doing is spinning we are actually not being productive and the minute you do stop and you take 20 minutes of slow, deep breathing, and you come to yourself, the minute you start to do that sort of practice, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you will gain clarity mm -hmm. on how to not be so busy. Because wow. wow. nobody needs to be, everybody keeps this, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Busy doing what? What are you busy doing? Because you're not coming into yourself. Wow. You're not busy. To, you, you, so for me, my message to all adults right now to save our generation of kids coming up, we need to be responsible. Mm. We need to be responsible with ourselves first mm. Mm -hmm. so that we can understand our truth, shine our light so that others can have permission to share to shine theirs and if we are in our hamster wheel yeah. if we i just quoted um williamson marilyn williamson um, yeah. shine your light so that you may give other persons permission to do the same if yeah. we are not willing to face our own self Fauza, yeah yeah and People are not doing it. People wake up at whatever time they wake up in the morning and they get going and they don't stop until they go in the bed. Yeah. If more of us were able to actually stop for 20 minutes every single day yeah. and slow down our heart rate, slow down our brain waves by deep breathing, that practice alone, it begins to open a door mm -hmm. to a to a certain understanding mm -hmm. and that hamster wheel that you are running mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you begin to understand that actually that's your trap yeah. mm -hmm. that is actually your trap and you're trapping yourself and your family and everybody you love in it mm -hmm. this is the, the, this is my message mm -hmm. thank you so much naima you're welcome thank you so much honestly for giving us a real talk this is real talk, yo. Real right talk, yo. now, right <laughs> here on Fauza's diary. Naima, I just, I, I'm so speechless, really, because everything that you have said, it's real. And these things, they are actually happening as we are having this conversation. Yeah. Um, sure. I just want to end with this conversation by what you had said earlier, and I will quote. Happiness is here and now, right here, right now. Not tomorrow, mm -mm. Not, not when COVID five minutes. is gone, mm -mm. not when you have the best car you wish you could have. Mm -mm. Honey, tomorrow is not promised. Happiness is here and now, yeah. okay? Thank you, so much, Thank you so Thank much, Thank you so much, Naima, Thank for you. joining me. Uh, of and, course. Yes, and for pleasure. sharing, for sharing your wisdom, your experiences, um, your knowledge. Um, yeah, it's full of inspiration. Um, and for you, my viewers, I, I really believe that, um, especially, I want to talk to parents right now. Parents, boundaries direction don't just assume if you are really if you really cannot handle it have a schedule 
as well, what Naima has reminded us to be is to be observant, okay? Let us be observant to our little human being that we've been entrusted to shepherd, okay? Um, yes, and uh, it's back to school. Mommies and daddies, I know you've got this. You've had a lot of inspiration from Naima. She's an educator with decades of experience. So she has given us quite a lot for us to learn. And really, we can do this. It's not easy, but we have the grace to push on and to keep us going. Okay? Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this conversation because you just never know there is a mother somewhere who has a child on her back and another one in her tummy, and she is helping another one doing their homework. You'll never know. They might just want someone to just, you know, to just to listen to this conversation, to everything that Naima has said. So please share this conversation because you just never know who might need it. All right, and stay safe, and I will see you guys soon with another inspiring conversation just like this one. Share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.